I'm so glad to have you back here in the last lesson of our first module of our Coffee Cup project this week. And in this, we want to talk about the bottom here. We have to close this cup and like before, we want to do this in a procedural way. So procedural modeling is also the topic of this lesson. Also, we want to take a look into the Boolean tools and I think this is really exciting. So let's get started. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. First thing is I want to search for a good point where I want to add a branch to that here. And this is, from my perspective, one of the wonderful things inside of Houdini. That you have this tree here and you can branch out everywhere and you can try something and you don't destroy your model. That's so cool. I use for this keyboard shortcuts. So maybe you remember I told you if you want to set a display flag of a node on which you select, you can press the R key. If you want to template, you can press the E key. I search for the right point and the first thing I want to do is I want to separate the inner here from the outside. So I go here from thickness top, I press the R key, you see, okay, no inner side exists. I select the second node here, R key, and now you see inner exists now. Maybe this is a perfect place to start. But then we generated a group here with the name inner edge. So maybe this edge group is important for me. So you can decide where you want to place yourself and you can't do anything wrong. So if you make a little bit of space here, we can try it here. And if we later need this edge group, we can yeah, rewire the whole thing to this point. First, let's get rid of everything which is not the inner. So our friend, the blast node. I make a connection here for people coming from Nuke, which are also working in this style here. A little tip, if you hold down the Alt key and click on a wire, you get a point node. And some people really like this dot or point node. So yeah, you also can do it like that. So let's do it here. We blast away everything in the moment. We need the inner. And if we take now a look here, we don't have the inner of our cup how to get the inner side of the cup. We have generated groups by ourselves. So every time we had here a group node, we built that. But also Houdini is able to generate groups on the fly for you. If you take a look, for example, here in the poly extrude where we generated this inner side here, you see in this area here that Houdini can generate polygon surfaces, output front, output back to close something and so on. And we also have here ticks for grayed out options. And these are groups which you can generate. So you only have to learn what group is important for you. And here we, like I've said, we extruded the whole thing down here. And so maybe this is the output side. So let's go here to the side and tick side group here. You can name this. I use extrude side. And we go here to the groups. Make sure that you press in the select tool, the four key, so that you get the primitives. And now you see here output side and you see, yeah, that's exactly the thing I'm after. This is the inner part of the extrusion. And if you now want, you can rename this. For example, this is the inner paper so that it's documented a little bit better. Okay, and then we can go here to the blast node. Now we have this group here in a paper and everything is now there except of the inner paper because the blast node has deleted it. And to make the opposite, you can tick here, delete, non-selected. So this is the inner paper. And if you like, you can reverse the whole thing. But now the next step is how to get somewhere here on this surface an edge or better to say a polygon inside of that. There are many different ideas which you maybe have. There's a clip node, for example. I want to show you some nodes. So the clip node normally cuts an object, a polygon object, by a direction and a position in space. So you can cut something. That's nice. You also can tell what you want to keep. And if you go here to all primitives, you maybe see, yeah, we have now here a new edge which you can place. You also can generate groups for that, but only groups for the primitives which are above or below the plane. 
So this note doesn't help you at all. If you work with NURBS, I really often use the CARF note, a really powerful note. But if you work with polygons or primitive, every primitive is then used here for these operations. And yeah, we have a whole bunch here of primitives. So this is not useful at this point. So we don't use the CARF note. And the solution is really cool. It's the Boolean operation. Houdini has a really powerful Boolean node. And you see here also some presets. So it's the same. So the Boolean node here can be switched between these different modes here. And so let's add a Boolean here. And I want to bool. And I bring it here to the A input. And if you now take a look, here is A, this is B. Then we can tell if it's a solid or a surface. So solid means it has to be a volume, but you can switch it also in a 2D mode. Then we have here the operation, subtract union, and so on. And a really interesting one is shadow, because then you only get a loop out of that. So this is something I can demonstrate at a moment. I use it for destruction, for example. Yeah. Maybe this is the solution for that. And my idea behind that is now that I generate a cutter. And this cutter is a simple grid. So I select the Boolean here or the blast. I press the E key to set the template flag on it. Then I add a grid node here. And this grid is really big. So I only need two by two meters, for example. It only has to be big enough so that it's bigger than the cup, so R key here to see it. Oh, make it bigger, four meters. Four meters, yeah. But we don't need all these rows and columns, so two and two. If you come from other 3D applications, be aware that you need two by two because it counts the edges. And if you insert one here, you don't see anything anymore. So two by two is the right one. And we name this cutter. So we name it doing. Then we make a connection here, go back to the Boolean. And now really important, Boolean's not happy. You can ask what's the problem, middle mouse button click. Yeah, there's something really strange going on. First thing we have to do is we take the cutter and move it up somewhere into our cup where we want to place here our edge. Then we see everything is blue, which is the problem here that our cup, if you select the cup here, is in the wrong direction. So let's reverse it really fast. Better. Now you see that. And now you see that we get here something which we can now work with. You see here, now we cut the whole thing. If you go to the Boolean, you have a better look into that where the cut is. But what we need is not a subtraction, we need an intersection. And now we see it doesn't work like expected. Because this intersection here is here open. What you can do to fix that is I go here into the options and I tell now the Boolean tool what we have. Set B is a solid. No, it's only a surface. And if you say this here is a surface, you don't get this funny thing here because it thinks it's a volume. No, you need here a surface. And to make sure that it works all the time, you can tell this here is also surface, but you see now it can't work. So let's make it solid, but then do it right. Because if you select this here and look here, it's open. So this is not a volume. So make it a volume. And for this, we have a poly cap node. So if you now make a poly cap here, this here is nice and closed. It's a volume. And then if you go to the Boolean, we are really on the safe side that we don't get any artifacts here. Great. So I named this cap it so that we later know why we use that, reverse is clear. Here this is only inner and we know what's going on here. And this cutter is now something we can move up and down and we get the surface here. And so this cutter will be red 
because you remember everything where I want to change something later is red. Yeah. Now let's go back to the output paper and press the E key to have a template of that so that you see what's going on now. The next thing we need now is we have to extrude the paper up and in. So for this we take a poly extrude but to have a group again make a group node here and I want to show you something which is not needed at this point but I wanted to show you that in this lesson only that you remember it later. At the moment we always use the group create node with the open base group and we don't want to select here polygons because then we have numbers here and we run into problems. But what you can do is the following thing. I deactivate this and say I want to generate this group here which we name, let's name it bottom. We generate this here by the normals. So if you tick this now here you see suddenly this polygon is selected. Why? Because we have here a direction which is x, y and z in z direction. This one here. But this polygon is not facing in z direction. Why is it selected? Because your spread angle is 180 degree. So it selects everything which is looking into z direction and plus minus uh, 90 degrees or so 180 degree. What we want is we want a polygon which is looking in y direction. And then we can lower this really far until we are at zero and you see, or one degree, yeah, and still exactly this polygon. So this is also a way of generating selections. So you can have a whole bunch of polygons and you select them by direction. But also is possible you can include by edges and you can have bounding regions so you have volumes, for example, a cube or a sphere or whatever, and everything which is inside of that is selected. And for this, you have here this external input. If you want to know more about that, you can take a look into my Houdini Fundamentals publication on Vimeo. There I explained all the group nodes, but that is enough for this here. And now we take a poly extrude again, shift enter. We bring this up like this. And because we want later to use subdivision surfaces, so we need some more divisions. Let's do that here directly. Okay. And this is done bottom up. Then we need here a curve and an insert. So next poly extrude again. This time we insert it and to make sure that we use our group let's go back here and say I want to have this group and I also want to use this group so now we are on the safe side now we can insert it for example until this point here and then I can move the whole thing up here with a red line so that it's a little bit curved and because I want to later use, like I've said, subdivision surfaces, I make some divisions here. Yeah, and if you want, you can use a spline shape here with curved and so on. But in our case, I don't think that we need that. And I think it looks good. It's the wrong direction because maybe I want to texture it from here. So this is button top. So reverse that, okay, nice. And now we can connect these two. So make a null object at the end. Let's say this is the cap bottom, make it black. And to see then both in action, we take a merge node, a little trick here is if you select two nodes here and hold down the optional alt key and drag here, you see you directly get a merge node for these two. So it's a little bit faster, looks cooler if someone is looking over your shoulder. And then you can take your null object and say, this is the cup. Yeah, and that's it, I think, for the paper part.
if you want you can color here a little bit so only to check if it looks okay for you this is a trick i use really often so let's make this a little bit paperish like that and the merge node will now tell us okay there's a cd coming from here but not from here to fix that you take this node i shake it out and bring it over here and then i change here the color a little bit so to see what's going on yeah press save make it tidy okay and then we can go out here and you can now use the plus on your keyboard to make this a subdivision surface preview or what you can do shift minus for me german keyboard you can select this node go to render and display as instead of full geometry subdivision surface we have now added some loops here so it should stay really close here in its shape if it doesn't stay in the next lesson in the next module we will add maybe some edge loops here and we also have to do the lid so you will see how we cut them later but yeah this is now the finish of this first module i hope you learned something and you're still motivated to now dive into procedural modeling inside of houdini if you liked this houdini practice hour if you learned something please subscribe give me a thumbs up on youtube and if you want to have the trainings data you can get them for a small fee on gumroad let me know if you have more wishes use the comments below the videos to talk with me i'm really happy to help my name is Helga Maus from pixel train have fun see you next time